Okay, here we go. This is Math 2 uh, Semester Review, looking at Unit 9. Again, I'm starting with number 3 on like your second or third page in because the ones prior were circles, so I'm starting about here. Um, unit 9, we're dealing a lot with um, kind of some area and volume of polygons, mostly a lot of volume stuff there. Um, so, generally a lot of volume. Uh, so, here we go. A couple of review things as we start in there. First is the apothem. Uh, that word comes up here. Remember, the apothem is that distance from the center point of your shape that forms a right angle when you draw a line out to one of the edges of your lines, uh, sorry, one of your sides. You get the right angle form there. You have to be able to use that to find um, different things. Um, remember what your special triangles, um, your x, if you have 30, 60, 90, define different values. This comes up a lot when you're using your apothem here. Um, that you have an X, this, the hypotenuse is 2X, and the one that's this tall, the long side, is X root 3. You'll use that a couple times in some problems here. I forgot to write down here real quick that to find the, um, the area, well, I'll get there in a second. To find the area of a, of a shape here with the apothem, um, you're going to use the, of a polygon, you use one half of times the apothem times the perimeter to find the area of a polygon. Okay, so that's in the little formula for the area of a polygon. That's that. Volume is essentially uh, the base of the shape times the height. So if you have a triangle, you'd find the base of the triangle, uh, which is one half base times height, and multiply it by however, how tall, however tall that might be. If you had a square on the bottom, you'd multiply that by the height to find out how tall that's going to be. And if you had a circle bottom for your base, you'd find the the, 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 sorry, the area of the circle, pi r squared, and multiply that times the height to find out the volume. So basically the base is going to be one of these three things times the height. And again, you might want to tilt, tilt it or change the shape so that you use these as your base formula, and height is how tall the whole thing is. For the special volumes, we have things like pyramid. A pyramid is going to be one-third of the base times the height. All right, so that comes up there, and we're dealing with square bases for the most part here. So that's going to be one you'll plug in there. A cone, because it has a circular bottom on a cone, we use pi r squared for the base times the height. So one-third pi r squared times the height. On both cones and pyramids, one thing to keep in mind is, be careful about this, you don't want to use a slant height for your height that you multiply there. Sometimes they will give you that height on the exterior surface of the shape, okay? That's not what we want to use. We want to use what I call the tall tent pole. That means the one that's in the center of the base all the way up to the high point of that pyramid or that cone, okay? So be careful about that. That's going to be found by oftentimes, let's say, for example, they told you that this base here was, uh, let's go with 8, that it had a length of 8 and 8, all right? That means that if I was to extend this here, this tall tent pole and that line, this line is going to be half of that because the tent pole lines in the middle. So I would have a number four there to work with, and they've probably already given you the slant height of something else, and now you could use a Pythagorean theorem to find out what that tent pole is going to be. We'll look at an example of that, of that together. And then finally, volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. That's for the volume of the sphere. Again, formulas you'll have to memorize because they won't be on the test. So make sure you spend some time making some note cards or flashcards so you memorize those formulas so you're ready to go. Let's jump into today's stuff. So here we go. Find the formula uh, for a polygon using the apothem. Again, it is one half of the apothem times the overall perimeter of the shape. Or if you wanted to, if your teacher taught you here, you might say it's apothem times pyramid all over two. Doesn't matter, it's exactly the same. I like fractions, most people don't, but they're fine, get used to them, <laughs> it's not a big deal. Okay, let's look at number, the next one, 3A. It says, what is the side length of an equilateral triangle with a radius of four root three? So this is an example here where I need to find out a side length and to do that, I'm going to need to figure out what this apothem is going to be in order to figure out what this length is going to be. Okay? By drawing this line here, I have a 90 degree angle. I know that I have a triangle, and a triangle is 180 degrees inside of a triangle. 
When I divide that by 3, it tells me that every triangle here, angle here, is 60 degrees. Because this line cuts it in half, that tells me that this angle here is 30 and this one is 60. So with that information, let's draw a little triangle. I'm going to draw my base tri basic triangle here, like this, my 30, 60, 90. And what we learned before, and this was semester one, was that if the value of this was x, the value of the long side was x root 3, and the value of the hypotenuse was 2x. Okay? Now, in our case here, draw a little line here, we have a triangle just like that, but they gave us this value right here as 4 root 3. Okay? So, this is helpful information. I'm not done yet. I'm trying to get this length right there, although that's only half of it. So to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to set up a little equation. I recognize that these triangles are the same, the ones I just drew. So really, 4 root 3 would be equal to, in my traditional triangle, to 2x. Okay? This would be the value of that. Those are the same matching values. So I'm going to start there. So to solve for x, I would divide both sides by 2. And so x equals 4 divided by 2 is 2 root 3. So that gives me actually that length right there. So this length is 2 root 3. Okay? Now, so I have two sides. I just found out my apothem is what I just found out. Okay, I can plug it back in here, 2 root 3. But I'm trying to find the side length. So I'm not done yet. Comparing my triangles, if that's x, the long leg was x root 3. So if this is my x, 2 root 3, I need to multiply this by a root 3 to find out what the long leg is going to be. So I take a 2 root 3 times root 3, and that equals 2 times root 3 times root 3, the two roots are going to, radicals are going to cancel out, and I'm left with just the three. That's going to equal six. So this length of my long leg is going to be equal to six. Be careful, though. You're not done yet. If you look at your answer choices, that's not an answer choice, <laughs> which is surprising. I probably would have made that an answer choice there, just to mess you up. Ha <laughs> ha. Not really. Okay. That's only half of the length of the triangle. So this is six. I need to do another 6, so I'm going to get the whole length. So I'll take the 6, I'm going to multiply it by 2 to get an answer of 12. Alright, and that's how I find out the length of that shape. I have to use one of these special triangles, the x, 2x, x root 3. I'm making basically like a little kind of proportion type thing. I'm making equal to each other to say what's going to, how am I going to figure this out? And a couple steps to get there. There's not really a shortcut. Um, I mean, there might be a shortcut, but that's the way you do it, knowing what we've been taught so far. Okay? Let's look at number, letter B. The same idea, except that now we have a hexagon. Okay, I'm going to move my paper here because the picture is on the next page. All right. So it says a regular hexagon has a perimeter of 120 to determine the area of the figure in simplest radical form. Now remember, our area for a perimeter of a, of a polygon, whatever, is going to be one half times the apothem times the perimeter. Okay? So in this case here, I know the half. I don't know the apothem. But I know the perimeter is 120. So I have that information. So I have to find the apothem first of all. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, this is my, my big equation I'm going to be working on. I'll come back to that. Can't solve it quite yet. Okay, so what I want to do then is I'm going to take a look at what they gave me. They told me that the perimeter is 120. Well, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sided shape. So 120 divided by 6 is equal to 20. So that tells me that the length of every side is 20. Okay? Because I'm drawing an apothem here, I'm cutting this shape in half, or this length in half. So this line length right there, or this segment right here, is 10. 
I go back to what I know about special triangles. And when I have a special triangle, I have an X here and my apothem becomes x root 3 and that's a 2x. So if I knew the radius, this would be two, 10 times 2, that's the radius, but my apothem is going to be, in this case here, I just draw it a second time, because that's 10, my apothem in this case will be 10 root 3. So I can go ahead and add that in here. This becomes 10 root 3 for my apothem. Or I can add it right here in my formula, 10 root 3 for my formula. So I have a half times 10 root 3 times 120. So I just had to do an extra step here to find out what my apothem is going to be. So for me, I went ahead and said, well, half of 120 is 60. So I have 60 times 10 root 3. 60 times 10 is 600 root 3. And the answer just said to leave it in simplest radical form. And that's actually all we can do. So we leave it as 600 root 3. But you had to remember how to do those special triangles and how to work it out to find your apothem in order to use the formula that we wrote at the start of number 3. Okay, let's move on. What's the formula for use for finding the volume of a prism or a cylinder? Again, the volume is going to be the base times the height, or whatever that's going to be. Volume equals base times height. So on 4a, it wants to know what's the volume of this prism. What I see, first of all, is, is I have a triangle. I do have three shapes here, but because I have three shapes, it doesn't mean I have all the pieces that I need. Okay. Um, I have a, a base. I can look at a base and I have a base that's a rectangle. That's true, but I don't have a height to go with that. Plus, it's a triangle cut in half. So for me, what I did is I said, well, I'm going to find out what this height is going to be right here. I'm going to call this X. I want to find out what that height is going to be so I can have something to work with for my triangle. So um, if that's X, again, this length is 12, this triangle right here is also 12, right? I'm going to draw, shade that in there so you can see that. That triangle is a 15, 12, and my height is X. So the area of that shape, well, let's do this, sorry, first of all. The Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In this case here, I have X plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. I need to find out what X is going to be or x squared, sorry. And that's going to be x squared plus 144 equals 15 squared is a whole lot, right? So let's turn that on there. 15 times 15 is 225. 225 minus 144 is going to be 81. So x squared equals 81. I take the square root of both sides and x is going to equal 9. So now I have a height for this shape, 9. So now I can use the formula, and for me I'm going to use the formula for the triangle. I'm going to say 1 half of the base, let's go with 12, times the height, which is 9. Okay, that's my base formula, times the overall height of the, of the prism. In this case here, that's going to be that length of 18. Okay, so I do had I had some extra work to get that nine value right there. So one half times the, so this is my base times my height is how I'm working this out here. So one half times 12 times nine times 18. When I work all that out, I end up with 972 inches cubed. Okay. It's a little bit tricky there, and I think what you probably want to think about is if I'm doing this shape, how I want to look at it, I might want to look at it this way, right? So I actually have a triangle with a height. There is another way of doing it, but we'll leave it for that. The teacher might show you, but well, that's the basic way. All right, let's look at B. Now we have a rectangular prism. It tells me that the volume already is 108. Now, again, volume is equal to the base times the height. And when we have a prism like this, 
the base is going to be um, our length times our width times our height equals our volume. They gave me the volume, 108. We have a length of 12. Maybe we have a width of 3. And we just don't have a height or an x value. Okay, so now I have a basic algebra problem here. So 12 times 3 is going to be equal to 36. So we have 108 equals 36x. I divide both sides by 36. And 108 divided by 36 is going to be equal to 3. And that's my missing link. It's 3. For number letter C, we have a cylinder. Compute the volume right a cylinder here, um, and it says with a with a radius of three feet. Just be careful as you're doing this here. You can tell that it used to be a four, and they said no, that doesn't work. Let's make it three. So I'm gonna cross it out for you. Um, so our volume formula for the volume of a cylinder is volume equals the base. But our base is pi r squared times our height. Now in this case, once again, we keep pi. Our radius is 3 squared times the height, which is 7. So I continue down. 3 squared is 9 times 7. And I have 9 times 7 is 63. So I end up with 63 pi feet cubed, which is choice C. Okay? Number 5. Just plug in your formulas. Again, things you want to memorize. The volume formula for a pyramid. So a pyramid volume is going to be one-third of the base times the height. And for a cone volume, it's going to be one-third our base, which is pi r squared, times the height. And we're going to use those for the next page. So here we go. Next page. right here. Oops, slide it down. A square base pyramid has an, a base edge of 18 and a slant height of 15. Calculate the volume of the pyramid. Again, this is one we talked about at the very beginning. This is the slant height, not the actual height. So I have to use that slant height to find my actual tent pole that goes in the middle of this pyramid to keep the whole thing up. So let's draw this off the side real quick. I need to find the actual height of this pyramid. The slant height is 15. I want to find the actual height. Because it's a square pyramid, I'm going to take the length of a side and cut it in half. So half of 18 is 9. And now I'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what the height is going to be. So my h squared plus my 9 squared equals my 15 squared. So we have h squared plus 81 equals 225. h squared is then going to equal 144, square root of both sides. So my height is actually going to be equal to 12. Now I can use my formula because I know what the height is going to be. My formula, as I said before, is one-third of the base Right, that's the area of the base, which is 18 times 18 is square times my height, which we just found out is 12. So that's my setup to actually find my volume. One third times 18 times 18, the area of the square, the area of the base, times 12. And when you multiply all that out, we end up with 1,296. And this would be volume feet cubed. Okay. So again, the key thing there was they gave you a slant height. Can't tell you whether or not that's going to be there on your semester final, but just know how to do that. If they just give you a tent pole, then it's really simple. But if they give you a slant height, one extra step. All right, B. The diameter of a cone is 12 meters. The slant height is 10. Compute the volume. Okay. So once again, we need another tent pole. You gotta find the actual height. Right? So let's draw this off to the side here. This is the actual height. We know that that's 10. But because this is half of that, 
That means that half of six, half, sorry, half of 12 is six. So to find this missing part here, I end up doing x squared plus six squared equals 10 squared. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So x squared plus 36 equals 100. x squared equals 64. x is going to equal 8. So my actual height is 8 for that cone. Now I can use my formula, which my volume formula here is 1 third. It's a circle, so pi times the radius, so pi r squared times the height. So when I plug my values in, I have 1 third times pi. My radius is not 12, that's the diameter, so be careful. My radius is actually 6 squared times my actual height of 8. And when I do that, I end up with 96 pi. And it's meters cubed. Okay? So, careful. A couple things to be careful about. Remember, that was a slant height, not the actual height. And then, because our formula deals with a radius squared, that is not a radius. That's a diameter. Make sure you use the radius, which is half of it, 6. So, be careful of those tricky things, because you could come up with one of these other distractor uh, solutions if you're not careful there. All right, if a cone and cylinder have equal bases and the same height, what's the relationship? Well, our formula here is base times height, and this is one-third base times height. So essentially, a cone is one-third less than a cylinder. Okay? That's all that it means. The volume of a sphere, we said a volume is going to be equal to four-thirds pi r cubed. Okay, we're going to use that now to solve these next problems. Um, Okay, it says, what is the, again, it shows you here, diameter of a sphere with the volume of 288 pi centimeters cubed. So our formula helps us solve for the radius, tells me there's an extra step here, so here we go. So we're going to set that up like this. We're going to say 288 pi, my answer, equals 4 thirds pi radius cubed. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my pi's first of all. And then what I want to do is I want to multiply this side by the reciprocal. Multiply it by 3 fourths. Okay. So, I multiply 288 by 3 and then I divide by 4. I end up with 216 equals r cubed. r cubed. So, now I need to think to myself, what number x times x times x, what number times itself three times will equal 216, okay? And you can use your calculator on that, and what you find out is that 6 actually equals 216. When you cube 6, you get that, okay? And if you're not sure how to do that, well, maybe start with a number and just kind of do a little guess and check if you don't know how to use a calculator. I actually did 6 times 6 times 6, oh, and I got 216. And if I did a bigger number, went too big, just made it smaller. So your calculator can do that for you. I'll let you figure that out. But again, this is just the radius. And the question asks for the diameter. So I need to take that answer and multiply by 2 for the diameter, and I come up with 12 uh, is my solution. 12, and again, this is 12 meters, not 12 pi. So be careful about that too. This is 12 meters, we're just finding the radius. Okay? And that's it, we got rid of the pies. So the answer is going to be 12 meters for number 6a. Okay, find the radius of a sphere. No, so the radius of a sphere is 12, find the volume. So now we just plug it in. So volume equals pi. Uh, sorry, I should do the right way. My mistake. Volume equals 4 thirds. 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we're going to say it's 4 thirds pi times 12 cubed. And 12 cubed, right? Let's do this on a calculator to see how this works. So 12 times 12 times 12 equals 1728, right? Nice big number. 
I can multiply it by 4, even bigger, and divide it by 3, and I get 2304 pi. So my solution is going to be 2304 pi centimeters cubed for choice B. Okay, that does it for our review of Unit 9. Again, make sure you kind of have a little set of notes that you're going to look at to review some formulas so you can memorize those things there. Don't forget about what an apothem is, your special triangles, and be careful about slant heights and your tent poles. Make sure you use the right thing. Um, and that's it. Good luck.